Have you ever wondered how some people seem so optimistic and have their sights set on the future and what they want to create? Well, I became curious about that a long time ago and have set my sights on accomplishing that in my own life. And I want you to accomplish that. So today what I want to share with you is what high, high hope people do. That's a line from Panic at the Disco. So if you know me, you know I love them and I love music. High hope people, they have three fundamental aspects that they include in their thinking and their life. And I wanna share those with you today. And they are the opposite of what low hope people do. And we're going to start there because low hope people, guess what they do? They avoid, disengage, and escape. So low hope people don't move towards what they want to create in their life. They find it overwhelming. They find it stressful and anxious. So instead of going for it, they avoid and escape. So the reason this is important for me to talk to you about is that we know from science that porn makes it that your brain becomes stuck in a wired and tired mode. Wired and tired, too much high beta, too much theta on a brain map. That's electrical energy. That's the work that I do. So if your brain is using wired and tired strained brain, then your brain performance pattern could be making you a low hope person. And porn is making your brain performance pattern happen. So hopefully you're picking up the cookie crumbs that I'm dropping like Hansel and Gretel. So the idea is you watch porn and you've been watching it for a long time. So it has put your brain into strained brain, too much fast, too much slow, anxiety, overwhelm, wired, tired. So a wired and tired brain doesn't know how to approach and engage. It finds itself avoiding and escaping because it's overwhelmed and stressed out inherently because of itself due to porn. So fundamentally, if you want to become a high hope person, it's essential to stop watching porn and get on purpose in your life using these high hope strategies. So number one high hope strategy is a clear and specific goal. You have to know what you want to go after. You have to set the GPS for it. So for me, I'm on a mission to help as many people leave porn behind because it's so damaging to their brains and to their lives. So for me to have that clear and specific goal, my mission is to help people stop watching porn to get on purpose in their life by healing their brain. That's my clear and specific goal and I know what I want, so I'm out after it. Do you know your clear and specific goal in life? At the end of days when you're on your deathbed or like the definition of hell that I've recently heard is that on the last day of your life, you meet the person you could have become. And that gives me chills because at the end of my life, I wanna be laying in my deathbed knowing that I left it all on the floor trying to accomplish the purposes that I have in my soul. So when I meet that version of myself, even if she's a lot more fabulous than I am, and gosh, I hope she is because I've had some real doozies come at me in life where, you know, overcoming that is definitely make it, well, maybe not, maybe it's, maybe it's like coal making me into the diamond to become the best version of myself. But Anyway, when I meet her, I am going to be able to look her right in the eyes knowing that I've been trying to become her my whole life. So hopefully she'll be pretty close to me. But it starts with a very clear and specific goal. You have to become 100% committed to your goal. And honestly, when it comes to helping people recover from porn, my commitment has waxed and waned a couple times where it got overwhelming, it got to be a lot, um, it got, you know, there was some working parts that I didn't call for when I set out to do this, but you know what? 
in those times I retreated for a moment or two and then I doubled down because my commitment is real. It's 100%. So even in the moments that I didn't know it was still 100%, I was able to take the rest that I needed to figure it out. So first of all, clear and specific goal, 100% committed. All right, number two is agency thinking. Agency thinking means that you believe you have the onus of control in your own life. So I'm here to remind you that you are the creator of your existence. And I believe that when you get quiet enough, you can hear from your intuition, your spirit, divinity. You can hear the version you're supposed to be. But again, if your brain is in a wired and tired mode, it's blocking that voice of the true authentic self you that is in there. That's why it's essential to have quiet time so you can try to hear that version, the one from the future, the one from your deathbed. You have to hear him or her talking to you, telling you what to do. And then when you do, you have to know you can in fact do it. Agency thinking means you know you can accomplish your goal even when it gets tricky. So again, for me, I always know that when I set out to do something, it's hell or high water. I'm doing it. I won't be stopped. It might take me five years longer than I anticipated, but I am committed and I am moving forward. It might look different once I get there because again, I can't anticipate everything, but I stay committed and I know if I follow my intuition, I will be led to where I need to go to accomplish the goal that I've set with 100% commitment. And I'm going to tell you a story in a minute that will hopefully um, accentuate that. Okay, so, and then number three is that you have pathways thinking. I love this. High hope people have pathways thinking. And I'll tell you especially why I love this is because when I was younger, actually not that much younger, some people would mock me for my ability to be flexible. They're like, you're too flexible, you change too much. And that might be true, but at the same time, pathways thinking means that you're committed to your goal, you know you can accomplish it, but you're also open to multiple pathways to get there. You don't have rigidity in thought, you have cognitive flexibility, meaning that there's multiple ways that you can get there and that you're open to those multiple ways. You're not completely rigid in how you're going to do it. You know you are going to do it and you know what it is. GPS set and you're on the road, but if there's detours, you're able to look at that GPS and it flips you onto another route and you're able to follow that route. Now, again, going back to porn consumption, we know that if you watch porn, it locks your brain in strained brain. It creates neuro rigidity, which is the opposite of neuroplasticity. Neuro rigidity is the thing that gives you very black and white thinking. It is the thing that makes it so you can't see all the pathways. Cognitive flexibility comes out of a calm and focused brain. So when I map a person's brain, the green brain map, the green zone, is what I call the optimal brain pattern. If your brain is ebbing and flowing based on circadian rhythms and it's able to accomplish the speeds of calm focus and to move in and out in a way that's really healthy, that means you have more neuro flexibility, which then of course creates more cognitive flexibility. So in my work, it's neurological regulation equals self-regulation. And when you're really self-regulated, you're open to multiple pathways, pathways thinking. So let me tell you the story is that thankfully I feel very blessed and so excited that I have a book coming out to help people recover from porn addiction. It's called Mind Over Explicit Matter. Now, if you've heard me talk in the past, it was called Mind Over Porn, but we've decided to change it to Mind Over Explicit Matter. That actually took me two weeks to come on board with the name change. 
and I was being slightly rigid about it, but then I realized my rigidity came from the stress around it. So when I was able to get myself quiet literally for two weeks so that I could move myself through a process, then I was able to have the flexibility to be able to change the name to Mind Over Explicit Matter, which now I love. It has taken a little bit of time, but uh, like my family said, wow, it makes it a lot easier to talk about porn because now we talk about explicit matter all the time. And when we took the P word out of the conversation, it definitely makes family talk about porn a lot easier. So I'm very appreciative for the name change. Now the name change comes from the publishing company that I'm working with. They're the impetus for the name change. And this goes back to, I really wanted to put a book out so that people have a resource that they can purchase for a very low dollar amount and move through the process in my program, Porn Free Brain Forever. So it's a self-help book that moves you through the process I move you through in that digital program. So of course it'll complement that program, but of course it can be used by um, porn addiction recovery groups across the world. It can be used by individuals. So it's really, really exciting. So I wrote the book before I knew about the publisher and before I had the literary agent who found me on my podcast. So. Thank you for that, dear friend. So the idea is that I wrote the book, the literary agent didn't even know I had a book. And my intent was to try to find an agent and a publishing house company. And if not, I was going to put it on Amazon. So I did a very brief search. Brief is an understatement just because of the amount of working parts in my life. I did a one-off real quick search for a publishing company or a literary agent. And actually I got feedback from one gentleman who said, you're better off just publishing this yourself. No, I don't think any publisher will touch it because it talks about the P word, explicit matter. So what happened was it wasn't, I wasn't feeling deflated or defeated by that at all. What I was thinking was, you know what? It's probably just easier right now to put it on Amazon. So I started that process. And honestly, I got through about 75% of that process when the literary agent reached out to me and he's like, let's just try. And I actually said, no, thank you. I don't want to do that. The book's already done. And he's like, let's just do a one pass and see if, if we can get it into a publisher, it'll make bigger impact. It'll make it so that you can get it into more people's hands. And I said, okay, cognitive flexibility, pathways thinking. I was open to any of the pathways that came to me. And I never even saw this pathway. I didn't think an agent would reach out to me and would be able to get an amazing publishing company to be able to get this book out. So this is my message to you, high hope people. When you're high hope, it can come to you because you don't even know all the pathways in what is called the quantum field. If you know about quantum physics, what it means is when your mind and your heart are connected and they are 100% committed to something that is on purpose and it's good for you, it's good for me, and it's good for humanity, what happens is you know that it's good for everybody so your mind and your heart and your true authentic self connect. It changes your electrical energy. Your electrical energy becomes emitted out at higher frequencies so that you become more attractive. And then what happens is the stars will align so that the right pathway will open up for you. So going back to being mocked for this for a long time, people have mocked me for the conviction that I know I'm going to be able to do things that are way bigger than that version of myself. But the real versions of myself keep getting better more towards that optimal version of me that I can't wait to meet because I have clear committed goals. I know I can do it. I'm not sure how, but I know I can. And I'm open to all the pathways that come to me. And what's happened recently, and I know I've told you this before in a different video, is that my sister who used to mock me all the time for this sent me the most beautiful text a few months ago. And it said, you always say you're going to do something big and I always think you're crazy for it, but then you always do it. I 
respect that about you, which was a huge gift that she gave me. And it keeps me going. So I want you to join me as a high, high hope person. Become a high hope person with me. Leave behind the low hope of escape and avoidance. Leave porn behind. Get on purpose and get psyched about the life that you can create even when difficult things come at you. When difficult things come at you, you are going to have new healthy resources. Watch my other videos. Follow the brain hack strategies to regulate yourself in your real world and leave the unreality, fantasy, supernormal stimulus of porn that is damaging your brain, keeping you in strain brain, and keeping you as a low hope individual. Okay. I hope this helps you out. If you're looking for help, please go over to drtrishlee.com, Porn Free Brain Forever. It's the comprehensive program that walks you through unwire, rewire, and hardwire. And you're able to meet with me monthly in a group coaching meeting. They're totally awesome. Get your questions answered. I can personally keep moving you forward. If you're not ready for that, join Brain Training 101. When you get into it, I help you get the highest tech state of the art headband. I point you in the right direction so you can get the best pricing and I teach you how to use it and how to interpret the data. At the same time, I'm gonna teach you how to use your mind and your body to rewire your brain every single day so that you can accomplish your goals as a high hope person. All right, I hope this helps you out and until next time, control your brain or it'll control you.